Good morning. This is Charlie Pinky, Sierra Rec Now podcast. Uh, we hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at in the Sierra today. Or if you like me and you're in your office today and you're not out playing in the mountains, we hope that uh, the Sierra is within your sights and your plans are to uh, be there soon for your next adventure. Uh, this is our eighth episode of 2024 and we are uh, continuing our series as we look at this quarter of great places to see and experience in the Sierra. That's kind of our theme for this week. So we hope that uh, you've been able to join us and, and uh, come along on this ride. Um, if you're new to our podcast or new to Sierra Rec Magazine, you're just now discovering us on uh, uh, the different channels that we're on out there, whether it be YouTube or Spotify or these other different uh, podcast networks that we're on. Please like and subscribe. Join us along. We are all about the Sierra Nevada. I've been hiking and traveling in Sierra Nevada now for 15 years. Um, uh, really about 10, the last 10 as a business person. I own SierraRecMagazine.com, uh, where we print a digital magazine six times a year and then just share our hiking and backpack experiences and travel experience throughout the Sierra Nevada. So today's episode, uh, as we dive into it, you see the headline right there. This is probably one of the most asked questions across the board um uh that i get um maybe mostly because i work with families and kids a lot of my church uh, out of the carson valley the life point church and uh so i get this question a lot but i do get people sending me questions in about hey got any ideas for kids hikes or kids backpacking trips so with this weekend being valentine's day tomorrow so happy valentine's day if you're getting this uh, message a little late uh or early and then uh, this weekend's president's day weekend so most of the kids have monday off from school and so the question will always be, what do we do with our kids? It's winter in the mountains. The snow has fallen. And if you're not skiing, which is where I assume a lot of you guys will be at, except for I assume also the present this week is one of those things where your ski pass didn't is one of the blackout dates. Maybe I don't know. Uh, or parking lots are hard to get into. So I've built you my list of my favorite kid friendly adventures in the Lake Tahoe region for President's Day weekend. Uh, so we're going to walk through those today. Uh, this list has probably got nine on it. I'll probably cover 20 today. I've got, got all kinds of different ideas for the Sierra Nevada, but we're going to focus in on the Lake Tahoe region because that's where I'm from. And that's where a lot of my uh, my local uh, audience is from as well. So, so again, hope that you are enjoying the show. Uh, please like and subscribe down below. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by our sponsors at uh, Sierra Pines Resort. Um they're just north of Lake Tahoe, about an hour north of Lake Tahoe, up on the Yuba Pass. Uh, great little family resort. A lot of people uh, would know where those guys are at on the Yuba River there in Sierra City. Uh, they have eight cabins in the winter that are open for reservations now, and those eight cabins are right along the river. They've got snow in town. Sierra City's got a cool history to it. So it's a great place to just get away and escape. Uh, if you followed our January issue of the magazine, we covered uh, Comcations, which is a, a theme of 2024, and Sierra City would definitely be one of those places where you go relax and just calm and kind of di discharge. So check our friends out at Sierra Pines Resort. We thank them for our sponsorship of today's episode. So look, right, let's dive in. President's Day weekend, you got uh, kids out of school come Friday, you got Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. Uh, we do hope that you'll get out and enjoy the snow, um, although it has not been the best winter here in the Lake Tahoe um, uh, side of the Sierra. Uh, we do have snow in the mountains and we uh, I just crossed over um, 80 and 50 uh, this last Friday. I went over to Sacramento to watch basketball again, saw the Kings and Nuggets play and got to see them light the, light the beam, if you will, uh, in Sacramento. That was a cool experience. But as we travel over, I definitely feel like the west side of the Sierra has the most snowpack. Uh, as I'm over here in the east side, we do have snow right out my window right here in the Carson Valley. And uh, in Eagles and Ag this week, they had snow in the field to see the birds. So a uh, very cool event here in town. But uh, the uh, snow on the west side seems to be a little bit deeper uh, on that. So I assume, you know, skiing on Palisades maybe a little bit a little better. But what I also know is that further south, you go with more snow. So like Kirkwood's really got a good snowpack, I believe. Uh, Bear Valley's got a great snowpack. Heavenly did get new snow this week. Um, or this last week, Mount Rose is doing fine. So all the ski resorts are up here running full steam. Uh, should have a great weekend out uh, in President City weekend. But what do we do the kids if we're not going to be um, uh, skiing, right? You, you go snowshoeing, go, go whatever. So my um, all-time favorite thing to do with kids is snowshoeing because that's what I do, right? And so snowshoeing... 
Um, it, these are all places where snowshoeing would be popular. You could possibly go do some hiking on these. So I'll cover those a little bit here too. Uh, but this is the list that I'm going to cover today uh, in our list. So uh, Chickadee Ridge, Spooner State Park, Van Sickle State Park, Sugar Pine State Park. It's about to get the spelling here. Sorry, here. Cave Rock, Taylor Creek, Washoe Lake, Carson Valley, Wild Horses, and Grover. Uh, Grover's Hot Springs. So those are the nine I'm going to cover right off the bat. And then we'll uh, we'll share some other tips here as well. So let me talk about Chickadee Ridge first. Uh, Chickadee Ridge is uh, well known in the Lake Tahoe region, but it's an absolutely wonderful place to take kids. Not only is it near Tahoe Meadows, which is a good place to take kids sledding as well. There's lots of people here. So don't expect this to be a calm place. Uh, and there have been reports this year that traffic's really pretty bad up there. So you got to be got to get there early. Bring your bird seed. And here's what's cool about Chickadee Ridge. You got to go on a little bit of a hunt for them, right? They're just not on one tree. You got to go snowshoeing until you see the birds, hear the birds, and stop. Put your bird seed in your palms. They just like these kids are here. Uh, and they'll come right down out of your hands and eat the bird, bird seed right out of their hands. And the kids will love it. You can actually snowshoe all the way out to Inspiration Point, which is a great view over Lake Tahoe. Highly recommend that. Um, and then... But if you're you know you don't have a lot of energy, you just want to get back to you, just kind of explore around the trees a little bit with snowshoes. Uh, you'll find the birds um, in the meadow there. Sometimes right on the edge. Last year we this is a spot we're probably not not 50 yards off the highway, right next to the meadow here in this spot. This this tree spot right here uh, this is the first birds we found for the day, and we end up feeding birds in like 16 different spots this day. So it was it was a really great great day out with kids. Uh, so Chickadee Ridge highly recommended. Again, that's up on Mount Rose. Tahoe Meadow is the north side, northeast side of Lake Tahoe, um, and it's very popular. So, you know, get some bird seed, come on out. Uh, study done a few years ago, this bird seed does not hurt the birds up there. These birds are well trained to accept food out of your hand, uh, and they determine that it's not unhealthy for them, and they kind of expect it in this region. Now, I have tried to feed the chickadees in other parts of Sierra with no luck, so I assume this is just pure habit over time. Uh, but uh, even the Forest Service will tell you that it's okay to do now. So uh, really cool thing to do with kids, have not done it, rent some snowshoes, find a friend with snowshoes, go to Costco and buy a cheap pair of snowshoes, whatever it is, um, and uh, get, get out with the kids on that one. So Chickadee Ridge, highly recommend it. And, and this, this list is no, no, by no means one through nine is my favorite. Uh, they're just great locations to take kids, kid-friendly places. So next place on our list here is Sugar Pine State Park. Uh, might be also known as Esberg uh, Sugar Pine State Park. This is where the Winter Olympi Olympics was held back in like 1960s, I think. Um, and they actually have a, a winter snow zone that's kind of the old Olympic village on the other side of the highway. But if you go to the lake side of the highway, uh, they've got a bunch of acres there. It's all wood and forest, got a beach. Uh, I do believe this is actually where the railroad tracks go in the water also. Uh, you'll see that picture a lot. But the state park is a really nice place to take kids. It's a place where they can roam freely. There's a little bit of open space to them. Mom, dad, you guys can, you know, get their shoes on and let them walk around and, and see them from a long ways away. So they don't have to be right next to you the whole time. Uh, it's also not super busy in the wintertime. Um, there are people there, but it's not like it's crowded. Maybe in the summertime when they're camping. So Esberg, great place to see Lake Tahoe, experience the outdoors, and just go out and do this. You can see this picture here. This is from... Um, few years back uh, in March, and so there's a little bit less snow, uh, but you can, you know, you might get there this year, might see a little bit more snow, or you'll be able to just walk on the beach in your boots if you want to on that. So uh, another great location on there. I don't have pictures of all these places, by the way, uh, so we'll just kind of cover cover them as I, as I, as I can here. Uh, the next place on my list that I would cover on this, and I'll go ahead and I think I got a photo for this one. Yeah, Van Sickle State Park. Uh, this is in South Lake Tahoe on the nevada california borderline so this is up right behind the uh, casino uh, corridor there is a parking area for van sickle state park um what's really cool about van sickle state park one's got a cool history so it's kind of one of those places where you can walk around different signs uh snowshoe thompson sometimes go through and does a does a little show there uh but there's actually a place where you can the kids can actually put their foot in nevada and california and it's a great photo op because it's on the ground it actually says California, Nevada. It's right. It's really beginning state park. Uh, kids love that kind of stuff. They can get up in the mountains and and see the trees and play in the snow. And uh, you know, in, in this part of South Tahoe, actually, there may not be snow at the Van Sickle State Park. That's how bad a winter we had. It's very little snow if, if we do at this point. Uh, but that divide in the road where you got California on one side, Nevada on the other, and they can stand and straddle it. 
kids always find that fun. So we highly recommend Van Sickle State Park to kids and families. There's all kinds of trail networks up there. There's a waterfall you can go up to, although that, that might be a little icy this time of year. Um, but uh, really fun, fun place to go with kids. Biggest trouble with Van Sickle is parking. The parking's kind of next to the casino corridor. You got to be careful where you park at. Uh, so you don't get a ticket, et cetera, like that. But uh, uh, still worth it, checking out on that. So um, next on my list, and I don't have a, a picture over here, uh, Spooner Lake uh, State Park. And if you don't know, Spooner Lake is up on the Nevada side of Lake Tahoe on Highway 50. It is a, um, it's been recently renovated, so they have a great uh, kind of guest center there now. Uh, lots of signage, easy trails. They'll hike, hike down to the waterfront uh, and walk around the lake. Uh, right now, Spooner Lake, as the last weekend, was not frozen over all the way, so it's it's still got a, a pretty watercolor on it. I actually have snowshoed across some of the water on that lake, which is always scary for me, but uh, uh, it, it does freeze over in the winter time. My recommendation at Spooner Lake is actually there are some hidden cabins uh, out in the back country of, of Spooner Lake. So if you park at Spooner Lake and you're you're facing uh, towards the lake, and you'll know when you're there if you're facing kind of towards the lake. If you go to the left and off the mountain, there's a road and it goes back there. There's some old cabins that they rent out in the summertime back there. It's actually a really nice walk. You can go, you can hike back in there. It does get a little strenuous at the end because it's uphill back to the cabins, but uh, it's right behind the, the meadow that's to the uh, north side of the, of the park. So um, I, I, lo I love it. I, I just find this is a great place to take kids. Again, it's a little more wide open, a little bit more trail friendly. Lots of space for them to play and just get outdoors. So, so highly recommend that as well. Uh, next on the list would be go to Cave Rock. Cave Rock um, uh, has a, a trail that you can climb on top of Cave Rock so kids get a, this epic view of Cave Rock. And if you don't like the idea of Cave Rock because it might be slick or you're not sure how to how to park in Cave Rock, um, then um, – Oh, this escaped me. I apologize. Give me just a second here. There's a pullout just before Cave Rock, north of Cave Rock, um, that um, overlooks Cave Rock. It's a great place to take kids as well. Lots of rocks. Um, beach. Oh, shoot. I'm going to completely mind blank over that. Day. I apologize. So, but Cave Rock's on my list. Uh, if you have not done that, climb on top of Cave Rock. Uh, if it's I, right now, uh, I think Cave Rock would be okay right now. I don't think it's too icy or snow. I just drove past it. Um, you might want to check. The, obviously, if there's a lot of snow, or you don't want to have to take kids up there. That's really dangerous. Uh, but that would be on our list as well. Um, Taylor Creek. People don't think about Taylor Creek sometimes, but the Taylor Creek Snow Park there is, is across the road. You park at the snow park there. It's a whole winter area. What's cool about that is you got the option of, of snowshoeing into Fallen Leaf Lake. You've got the option of just following the creek. You can go down Taylor Creek and just walk the paths in the snow. Uh, that's all down there by Camp Rich, um, you know, uh, Talaka historical area. That whole area is a really cool winter area. It's got a nice tree vibe to it. You got the creek right there. You aren't going to see the salmon like you do in the fall, but there's lots of birds in the area. Um, you may actually do see bear tracks probably in this time of year uh, in that region. But uh, really do think Taylor Creek is just kind of one of those safe places. It's going to be one of the places where your kids are probably closer to you, not 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 quite as open maybe where they can run around. Uh, but, you know, again, we kind of uh, highly recommend that. Let me back up here on my list so I don't forget anything on this. Um, go back to my slides here a bit. Uh, next on my list on, on this would be the Washoe State, Washoe Lake State Park. A lot of people don't know this on – uh, 395 as it leaves Carson City goes to Reno is Washoe Lake uh, Valley. And Washoe Lake's just kind of a, a shallow uh, lake. It actually dried up like in 2016 and it's, and it's refilled. But uh, on the backside of the lake, there's a state park. Uh, and then if you keep going around, there's actually a beach access for the boats and stuff. That entire corridor, the wild horses run like crazy through there. And so I always find it fun to go to the beach side and walk the beach along the lake especially if it's not a windy day, if you got a bluebird kind of calm day and then just look for the wild horses, take your cameras with you. Uh, obviously don't get too close to the wild horses, but just getting to go out and kind of explore the sand dune area of the beaches, walk on the lakes. You got the, the Carson range of the Sierra up uh, in your horizon, which is just gorgeous. Uh, and just, you know, taking pictures of the wild horses, I think is a lot of fun for kids. They can go out and you know, kind of experience what the nature uh, in its natural habitat of Nevada. And I did say natural habitat. I'm one of those horse guys. I think the horses were here before us. 
So if you're cattlemen or one of those guys that thinks that they're not native and they should all be shot and moved away, then I'm sorry. I'm not on your side. So uh, keep the horses. I love the wild horse in Nevada. Uh, go out and experience what you can. Uh, and if you're looking for another place uh, uh, right across the, uh, the way is Bowers Mansion. Bowers Mansion is a fun place in that same region. So you kind of combine those two together uh, for a great afternoon and come into Carson City uh, for some lunch with the kids, uh, uh, grab Chick-fil-A or whatever. So uh, next on my list is Grover's Hot Springs. Again, we're getting a little bit of away from Lake Tahoe here right now. But Grover's Hot Springs uh, is out of Markleyville. It's uh, on Highway 4. It's about a 20-minute drive from South Lake Tahoe. Uh, and Grover's Hot Springs provides an opportunity for you to, again, snowshoe or hike into a waterfall, uh, to enjoy a hot spring if you want to pay pay for a swimming pool hot spring for the kids. Uh, there's just lots of wide open space to uh, do that. This area was burnt uh, quite quite uh, badly um, four years ago in the um, uh, Caldor Fire. Uh, it's called Caldor Fire. Um, but it's still a great experience. The waterfall is beautiful if you hike back to it. It's about a two-mile hike back in. And this time of year, snow, based on the snowpack we have right now, you could don't even need snowshoes. You're probably just going to be able to take your boots and walk back there. You might run into a, a you know, drift or two that's deep, but very, very safe. Uh, and the paths that go on top of the waterfall uh, aren't going to be too slip. You may want to be close, you know, careful next to the water with the rocks, but you'd be able to get up on top pretty easily uh, with that. So I always recommend Grover's Hot Springs. a great day out. Stop in Markleyville for lunch afterwards uh, or come back in the Carson Valley for lunch as well on that. So that is my current list, right? That's that's the list that kind of if somebody said, hey, what do I do with my kids, right? This is what I would probably send them out to do uh, this weekend. A um, couple other things if you like travel a little bit, okay? Lundy Canyon is amazing in the snow. You do the snowshoe in there. It is usually deep. And you do have to watch the avalanche warnings before you go. But if you're looking for a place, Lundy Canyon is an absolutely stunning place to take kids. Uh, another place to consider, and I just drove kind of around this area, is Loon Lake. Loon Lake is in the um, uh, Crystal Basin. And you take a road off of Highway 50 just before you get to Fish Springs. The road goes up the mountains there. They plow it all winter all the way into Loon Lake. There's actually a winter hut back there. Um, and the lake itself in that part of the region is right on the border of Desolation Wilderness, looking into the um, uh, Sierra Peaks in the backcountry. But it's just a really pretty area. It's got a lot of open space. You can find space for, again, the kids to kind of uh, uh, have their own space around there. A lot of times the lake does freeze over. I would be interested to know if it froze over this year right now because it just doesn't seem like we have that much snow in the area. Uh, you know, on the highway 50 in that area, there's no snow down low. So I, I know there's snow up top, but I don't know how much there really is up there. So that would be another place to take kids. It'd be a lot of fun. Some of the state parks to consider if you want to do some traveling um, over in Grass Valley. Um, I'm going to go mind blank again what the state park's called there. I apologize. Let me hold on. Give me a second here. Uh, so in Grass Valley, uh, there is a um, uh, historic gold mine. Uh, there that's really beautiful. All the Empire Mine State Park, Empire Mine State, just huge, massive uh, estate, if you will, that was a gold mine. Um, and uh, it's got this big, huge, grassy green area the kids can play in. They've got a old uh, uh, estate uh, house there that's really cool to look at. They've got mine tours, um, etc. So uh, that's a, that's a really uh, kind of do some traveling. Also, Grass Valley, Nevada City, just a wonderful place to. Go have lunch, drink a glass of wine, walk around some old town. Uh, so highly recommend that. If you do go to Grass Valley and do that, uh, downtown, I'm not going to know the name of the shop, but look for hand sandwiches. They, there's the place down there that, that uh, still makes the original hand pocket sandwich they used to feed miners. Uh, it does a really good job at that. Um, and uh, I've had, had uh, lunch there before. It's really nice. So that's one, one of those options. Uh, another option to consider in the springtime, if you like desert uh, stomping around, is to go down into um, Bridgeport area. And and um, between Bridgeport and, oh, what's that highway there? Um, in the Bridgeport area, there's a couple, there's a couple of ghost towns, right? We all know about um, Bodie. And, and Bodie, uh, you can, it's kind of cold and, and get in there right now, but uh, to the east side of Bridgeport, um, you can take route, 
Uh, where's that route at? Apologize here. Uh, you know, it didn't plan this out. Bridge um, You can take route. What did I call that route? Apologize for there. I should should know this uh, off the top of my head here. Oh, I'm going the wrong direction. Uh, route 182. Take Route 182 and look up the uh, Masonic Mountains or the Masonic Mining Camp. Um, and there's actually uh, on this road the Chemung Mine. Chemung, I'm going to say that wrong. Probably it's called Chemung Mine. Uh, it's a great uh, outdoor experience. If you got maybe a four by road, you probably got a little muddy in there. So might be careful with that. that. If you continue on 182 where it crosses into Nevada, it becomes the 338 Nevada. It's kind of funny how they change the name of the, name of the road. But there is river access um, on the NF028 road. It's the East Walker uh, road. You follow it back on dirt road, crosses over the East Walker early. That entire area for uh, fishing is a, a great type to take place. The kids go back and go fishing pole. Um, and they got some cattle yards there, easy access to the river. Uh, it's another, another cool place, especially if you want to do that um, across the Sierra. And then that's that's probably it. The next place I would consider going, um, and I'm not sure how the ice looks right now, is Davis Lake um, up in Plumas County. Uh, Lake Davis is just a stunning place to go. There's a pair of wild uh, bald eagles that have nested there on the shoreline for years. You can actually stand at the dam and see them out there or take the uh, Lake Davis uh, trail that follows the east side of the lake. Very beautiful hike. I've hung hammocks out there before, hiked in a mile, hung a hammock and backs out of a campground that's, that's closed right now. Uh, there is ice fishing at Lake Davis in the wintertime. Again, I'm not, not sure what it looks like right now uh, because winter has been quite uh, low at this point. Uh, but that's actually another really great idea for the kiddos. So if you like to do a little traveling, that'll give you some idea. Obviously, in things we didn't cover today, Death Valley would be a great time to go to Death Valley right now. There's a, actually a lake in Death Valley for the first time in many years. Uh, Yosemite National Park, you have the chance to go to the park. If you go to Yosemite, remember, you have to have reservations. Uh, it is President's Day weekend. It is fire fall right now, so reservations are required. So that was not as easy. Uh, Sequoia National Park and Lassa Volcanic National Park. Both have good snow right now. Both are great experiences for kids. Uh, last and take your sled. They have a great sled park right there on the south side of, of the park. Uh, so those are those are wildly great options as well. Uh, so that uh, that should really feed your feed your need for the kids this weekend, if that makes sense. So um, I hope you have a great President's Day weekend. Uh, we do have our March issue we're working on right now. We will be focusing on um, Death Valley. We have a Death Valley uh, piece in there. We have a thing on the Eastern Sierra tour, which involves Death Valley, but some of the Eastern Sierra places to sit, uh, see and do. Uh, some of the backpacking questions I keep seeing online, there's a lot of people doing their first backpacking, looking, going, hey, I'm coming to the Eastern Sierra. Where would be a great starting backpacking trip? Where where, where to you know, go in, maybe a little bit less elevation, a little, little less stress for people? Uh, and my answer to that all week long has been the Hoover Wilderness. Take a look at the Hoover Wilderness. It is an untapped opportunity for exploration. Uh, I like the Hoover Wilderness and the Carson um, Iceberg Wilderness. Both of them are great if you want a little bit less people with beautiful landscapes. Hoover has an advantage. It, it, it has a lot more of the granite that you were, that people are looking for in the Eastern Sierra. It's, it's below Sonora Pass. And I love going in um, and uh, there at Levitt's Meadows, for example, back in the Cadet Country. We did it last year. A great... Um, Alpine lakes in there and granite to, to climb through and the rivers are cutting through gorges. Uh, absolutely beautiful area. A ton less people than you're going to see down in maybe Bishop, for example, uh, in the Lakes Valley, which is beautiful. Again, don't think me wrong. All beautiful hikes. That's a great one. Another one out of Bridgeport, uh, especially for beginners, Green Creek. Uh, you can go to our website. We have a great write-up on Green Creek. Maybe one of my all-time favorite hikes in the Sierra just because – of the variety fall to fall colors in the fall. It's got a creek you're falling all day. It's got some granite. Um, you know, Green Creek Lake is is gorgeous. East Lake is gorgeous. It's just it's got a lot a lot to offer, uh, and it's just not as busy as some of the other lakes um, that you're going to find a little further south, out of Red's Meadows, for example, or um, uh, Bishop area. So again, all those all those places are great. We'll cover a, a lot of those uh, in our upcoming issue. So we hope that help is helpful for you. Uh, ourselves this year for backpacking, we're looking at the following. We're, we're, we're going to be backpacking Sequoia National Park. We're going to be doing Twin Peaks. 
uh, hike there. Uh, we are going to be going into Yosemite. I'm hoping to, I haven't bagged this yet, but I'm looking to do a September trip to Yosemite for five days. Um, my personal, I've never done a five day trip. So it'll be my first for five day trip. I'm usually more of a three day backpacking trip guy. Uh, and then my son and I are looking at the Tahoe Rim Trail this summer. So we'll be looking at the Tahoe Rim Trail. We're breaking that down to a six, six weekend uh, package instead of all at once. So uh, we'll be highlighting that in our March issue too with our plans for our six uh, weekend itinerary for breaking down um, that loop. Knowing that by doing that, we're actually adding mileage to it because we got to come out of off the top of the trail, out to the road a couple places, which is going to add some extra miles to our trip. But it'll still be a great experience to do uh, in, as we're moving forward on that. So we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Uh, is it President's Weekend? Please join us next weekend as we start to dive in a little deeper into some of our Sierra experiences in the past, and we'll start covering some of our backpacking plans um, and uh, some more destinations across the Sierra. Have a great day where you're at. I hope you get out and explore the Sierra this weekend. Thank you for joining us today. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. We're trying to grow this audience here. Um, of course, we'd love to have you as a subscriber at SierraRecMagazine.com. It's free. Uh, just got to go sign up. We'll get the once a, once a month email, and once every two months, you get a magazine. So it's all free. Love to have you on board, um, and we'll be sharing our insights on this here that way. Have a great day. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy President's Day. Enjoy your week.